Romagna here in Italy, where Alto Dromo and Zuidino Ferrari will host round three of ELMS 2024. Now there are a fantastic 43 cars lining up on the grid, so the four hours of Imola definitely promises something great. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had the 24 Hours of Le Mans, one of the biggest endurance racing events on the calendar. And one of our very own drivers won it for the second time in his career, Francois Perodo. Now, we asked some of Fancho's teammates just what makes him so special and why he keeps winning in motorsport. fait euh, ensemble le Mans classique. Je suis parti avec une voiture qui est tombée en panne dans le premier tour. François, euh, cinq minutes après, tapé la rail euh, juste à l'endroit où j'étais euh, parqué. Donc on a commencé à, à discuter à ce moment-là. J'ai essayé de him parce que c'était sa première moderne. J'étais un peu maybe harsh sur le coaching, mais à la fin, j'étais true. Vous savez, quand vous êtes jeune, vous dites la vérité. We met for the first time at a test day in Vallelunga in 2019. Yeah, I met Francois first time in 2020. Uh, our first race together was uh, Portimao ILMS. Super nice feeling with him. I met him uh, last year uh, in Portimao after the last LMS race. So actually, it was a, it was a nice memory. It was really fun from the first moment. I learned a lot on the human being as well with Francois. Uh, I grew up a uh, lot faster because I was only 16, 17 at that point. Uh, he's really committed and it's it's really appreciable for us. He's not doing any mistake anymore, and that's why he's winning championship and he's winning Le Mans. Really impressed, especially this year, because uh, this year with all the power of the uh, LMP2, it's uh, more difficult to, to drive. And uh, it really impressed me. He's uh, all, always really fast and consistent. I obviously didn't know um, once I came back that he had won in LMP2 as well. So after being friends for, for so many years now, knowing each other so well. He's also a big part of me being, being in hypercar now since he decided to trust me in the beginning. The victory is also uh, thanks to him, so it, it was amazing that he was there to witness it as well. Maybe I, I did give him some opportunity, but he also brought me a lot, so it's, uh, it's definitely a win-win situation. He's a pure product of uh, endurance racing and, uh, and, uh, and the Ferrari family. Uh, and then as a joke, you know, obviously I told him that uh, now he owes me a lot, he can give me the trophy. He refused, so uh, I asked him to give me the watch. So uh, yeah, he's got my address, I'm expecting that watch anytime soon now. You can see he's a really nice guy, uh, he never matters, uh, he will help you. Et whatever you need. On s'est créé une bonne amitié et je pense que c'est pas c'est pas prêt de s'arrêter parce qu'il est c'est un gars qui est extraordinaire. Maybe when he says okay I'm tired I don't want to do it anymore maybe he will stop but I think he has a lot of years to, to continue. It's a wonderful person to be honest it's also my best friend and I'm proud to be to be friend with Francois. He is always positive and uh, with a smile so it is always good. As you know by now, ELMS is the home of LMP2 with a whopping 22 cars in the field. Now the top five teams have just nine points between them currently. So let's see what some of the leading drivers have to say about this incredible prototype battle. This year the, 
the pack in LMP2 is the strongest we've ever seen. Uh, and it's an honor to be able to race against all these big names and, and show myself also compared to them. I think in the first two races, yeah, we showed that we have the, the pace to, to be on the podium. I'm sure we will have a, we can have a good run, especially this weekend uh, here in Imola. I think we have a very strong package. It's a great team. They've really welcomed me in a, in a nice way. It's like uh, my second family so far. We had a good start with Barcelona, it was a really good race, we had a really good car there, a uh, good strategy. Uh, it's great to see that many LMP2 cars, it's, uh, it's a great championship, it's a great fight. Even if it's a four hour race, you, it's, it's really difficult to make your way forward. I think it's never easy, there's always been very strong teams with very strong drivers, but uh, especially this year with uh, 22 cars. Every year the championship just gets tighter and tighter. There's less of a gap between the cars, you know, the lap, even the lot times here, there's a lot of cars within a second. So, yeah, every season it gets more competitive. So to be in with a in a good position after two races is just where we want to be. All the teams have a lot of experience now, so hopefully we can just keep pushing forward and, and get those results. The field of LMP2 this year is incredible. Uh, the, the level of drivers of single-seater, also from hypercar, like from really all branches of motorsport, we get together here and to be honest, it's super, super high. So to be this competitive with this level of field, it's amazing. We can only look forward and do the best we can and just keep the momentum going and the results will come. We have a quite a good connection, uh, first of all, between the drivers. We're, we're friends. Uh, I know Tom especially for quite a long time now. We worked uh, together in uh, back in 2022. He was my coach and uh, coach in uh, one of the junior racing series. So this is uh, all what you need, a quick car and reliable car, and uh, it will work quite well. I'm rather fine uh, defending the, the position in the, in the head of the championship rather than uh, trying to catch back. It's been a while since we have come to Imola, so it's time for a track tour. Now, what we need is a local driver with expert knowledge of this track. So we've brought in Ricardo Pera of GR Racing to take us through all the most important corners of this iconic racetrack. We are in Tamburello, which is a special corner because Ayrton Senna back in our minds. This corner is very special and very tricky. We need to jump over the first two curbs. We need to be really aggressive, especially with the GT cars. Uh, for sure here is a point where we can gain a lot of time. Very iconic part of the Imola track is uh, downhill from uh, the Piratella to Acqua Minerale. For sure, the key point is the first ride, this one. Uh, we need to roll the speed into the corner. We need to be really aggressive again on the curb. And then uh, there is a real braking. The real braking is uh, between Acqua Minerale 1 and Acqua Minerale 2. Heavy braking and then rotate the car really well. Uh, go over the curb, the green curb, especially with the GT cars and uh, look, look how happy is the exit. So we need to be really early on throttle and uh, rotate the car really well. Here is another point in Imola where we can uh, gain a lot of time. Variante Alta is another special point. We need to be really aggressive. Breaking points start from the Goodyear uh, board and then we need to be really aggressive on the turn in and for sure we need to run over this yellow curb. Uh, we need to be really close on this bollard, really close. And the key point here is to rotate the car really well. 
uh, because we need to prepare for the long straight down to Rivazza. We need to cut a lot of this uh, yellow sausage, and, uh, but we need to remind that uh, at the exit there is a track limit, so we need to pay attention of that. MGT3, Belgian Sara Bovi clinched her third pole position of the season in the number 85 Iron Dames Porsche. In LMP3, it was America's Wyatt Brickacek who put the number four DKR engineering machine on pole for the first time this season. But it's three out of three for Giorgio Roda, claiming the LMP2 Pro-Am pole for Proton, and he'll start ahead of Francois Perodo, a post-qualifying penalty dropping Richard Mill by TDS's Rodrigo Sales to third. In LMP2, the overall pole position was clinched by Frenchman Charles Milesi for Panis Racing. Manuel Maldonado for Panis on the left of the track. Alongside him, Matthias Kaiser for Algar Pro. That is the front row as we get ready to race for four hours here in Imola. On board with Marcus Siebert, the Edex Sport car. As we go green, it's four wide behind the leader as we sweep down to Varianti Tamburello. Good start from Ryan Cullen, Vector Sport from third on the grid, up into second place, pushing Maldonado all the way through Tamburello. As they sweep out through go the LMP3s and the LMGT3 field as well. And so far, touch wood, everybody has managed to keep it on the tarmac. Into the Villeneuve chicane. 
Dark Ray Khan, third place is Lorenzo Fluxer from Cool Racing. He's made a great start from fifth place on the grid. It's still Proton that leads in Pro-Am, but there's been a change at the head of LMG 3 Look for the pink Porsche. It is behind Derek DeBoer in the Aston Martin with the yellow highlights. Hiroshi Hamaguchi, third in the green 63 Lamborghini. Sweeping down towards Aqua Minerali for the first time. Vector Sports, Ryan Cullen chasing Manuel Maldonado. And there is the lead in the LMGT3. They are right behind the tail enders in LMP3. Starting from the pit lane into Europol, the number 43 car. This is Sebastian Alvarez. They are the championship leaders. They had a technical issue and they are currently in 25th place overall. Trouble for into Europol's LMP3 car, Alexander Bukantsov pulls off. Derek Dubois leading in LMGT3 in the Racing Spirits Le Mans, Aston Martin and the Iron Dames, Porsche right behind. Sara Bovi, the Belgian, pushing hard. Looking on the inside into Tosa for the lead of the race. She doesn't get by there, but the Aston can't quite make the corner, runs out wide and there is a change. Sara Bovi leads. And Derek Dubois in second place, at least temporarily. The Iron Dames have been so strong all season long. The only luck they've had has been bad luck, though. Is that going to change here? Out of the second in LMP3, Alexander Matchell holds off Matt Bell. Matchell, the pole sitter, but in front of them, Torsten Kratz, the WTM by Rinaldi racing driver, grabbed the lead right from the start. And they're passing Alexander Bukantsov there, look, who's heading back to the pits after stopping on track. Down the hill comes the battle for fourth in LMP2, Algarve Pro. Blue and black, that's Matthias Kaiser. Red and white, that's Johnny Edgar. AO by TF looks on the inside. Can't quite squeeze through, though, and that's going to leave him vulnerable to attack from behind. Look at Luca Giotto. Yellow and green into Europol, coming around the outside and Johnny Edgar there in traffic as well. Matthias Kaiser keeps his nose in fourth. Who's fifth? Well, both of them at the moment, but Giotto's got his nose inside as they come down into the very anti Tamburello and he puts the GR Racing Ferrari in the way of the AO by TF car as well. Now look at Luca Giotto all over the back and Matthias Kaiser for fourth place. Really pushing the Algarve Pro cars. They sweep down the hill now towards the Ravazza. Kaiser on the inside. Giotto will have to go the long way around. He'll cut back underneath. He's trying to cut back into Ravazza too. That's a great pass for fourth place. Brilliant stuff from Luca Giotto. And here comes Johnny Edgar. The red and white car back up to fifth place as Matthias Kaiser drops to sixth. Replay here, Aqua Minerali. Oh, that's John Falp in the Nielsen car across the curbs. And the LMP2 Pro Am driver loops it round in traffic. Falp is stuck in the gravel. Full course yellow, full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. We are intervening at T12 on driver's left. We're sending a forklift onto the runoff. Three, two, one, full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. I do remind you that the speeds of full course yellow are under investigation, as usual. Look at the yellow and green car, Luca Giotto again on the attack. This time it's Lorenzo Fluxa in the grey cool racing car. He's third, traffic at Variante Alta. And the LMP3 car is going to hold up the cool racing car. Here comes Giotto through on the inside of Fluxa up to third place. Johnny Edgar right there, AO by TF, the red and white car, looking to try and take advantage. Flukes are trying to battle back down into the Ravazza. This is fantastic racing from everybody. Here's the battle of the second, LMG 3 Derek DeBoer in the Aston Martin. Behind is Hiroshi Hamaguchi. We ride on board with the Japanese driver in the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Down into Aqua Minerali. Remember, rotate hard here and drive up the hill. Such a critical uphill sequence, this. Up to the Variante Alta. Looking for a way to try and put a move in on the Aston Martin. Over the curbs. Thump the yellow sausage on the exit. Be careful of track limits. Luca Giotto attacking again. This time it's Ryan Cullen out of Aqua Minerali. Climbing the hill. He's got a very good run. Cullen runs wide to the curb. Giotto on the grass for Inter Europol. 
Wow, heart in the mouth moment there. Ryan Cullen took all the road. Not sure Joss will be thrilled with that and the stewards might have a look at it. Leader in LMP2 Pro-Am, we're on board with Giorgio Roda in the Proton competition car that started from pole. And look at the gap now, over 13 seconds ahead of the Richard Mill by TDS car. Oh, trouble for DKR, their LMP2 Pro-Am car. That's the Aussie driver, Andres Latour Cannon. Looks like a harmless spin. Luca Giotto on the attack, Ryan Cullen defending into the Ravazza, Giotto on the inside, Cullen misses the apex, runs out wide and he's across the gravel, he's lost two more places. Johnny Edgar, AO by TF, the white and red car has gone by and so too has Lorenzo Flusa for cool racing. Up to Tosa comes the battle for sixth place, there's United Autosports, Philip Org, and he's just gone ahead of the car, we're right behind, that's Matthias Kaiser, as we ride on board with Marcus Siebert in the Edex Sport car, look, Siebert's got a great run up the hill, he's going to go the long way round the outside, up the inside into the Piratella, good pass, he's up to seventh. Leader in the pits, this is Manuel Maldonado, he's not the only one either. Vector Sport coming in, Panis coming in as well. This is the first routine stop. Rodrigo Sales out wide in the gravel. And through goes Francois Perodo for second in Pro-Am. Big mistake by the driver of the Richard Mille by TDS car. One minute penalty for Sebastian Alvarez. These are the LMP2 championship leaders into Europol. The penalty for not respecting the starting procedure. Don't forget they were forced to start from the pit lane as well because of a mechanical issue. On board with Torsten Kratz, no longer the leader in LMP3. That's the RLR M Sport car of Daniel Ali in front. And here's where he made his move. Dive bomb Kratz into Tosa. Such a classic Imola pass. You run out wide, leave your rival nowhere to go. Trouble at Tosa though. This is Jonas Reed in the Iron Lynx Proton car. Manuel Maldonado, the yellow and red highlights on the Panis car. The race leader heads Luca Giotto by just over 2.8 seconds. Giotto, well, he's carving into that, isn't he? Look at him there. There's the green and yellow of Inter Europol. And there's Ao by TF in third place. Johnny Edgar. Oh, and trouble. Is that Maldonado? Yes, Maldonado ran off wide. Luca Giotto's gone through. Giotto leads for Inter Europol. Maldonado needs to regain his composure to hold off Johnny Edgar. First round of routine pit stops for LMGT3. This is our leader. Sarabovi stays in the Iron Dames Porsche. Trouble at the Revata. That's the Nielsen car, isn't it? Yes, it is. David Heinemeyer Hansen in 27 loops it round into the gravel. Seventh place with Marcus Siebert. We are going full course yellow in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one full course yellow, full course yellow. Amazing. We just saw Ryan Cullen spin away sixth in the countdown there. Three, two, one full course yellow removed. Thank you. Manuel Maldonado with the yellow nose and the white and red car of Johnny Edgar. That second and third with two lap cars between them, Algarve Pro and Inter Europol. But the battle is on for second position. It's also LMP3 in trouble here at the number four pit. This is DKR Engineering's car. Alexander Matchell has stopped too far from the rig. And that's not his only problem either. This contact with Johnny Larson in the Formula Racing Ferrari is probably not going to go down well with the stewards. The battle for the lead raging on in LMGT3. Once more, Derek Dubois, Aston Martin in front of the pink Porsche. Sara Bovey all over the back of him, looking to squeeze up the inside into Tosa. She's on the grass, can't get through there. She's going to try the cutback, come back underneath him. That worked before when she got ahead of the Aston. This time, though, the Porsche hasn't got the momentum and there are yellow flags up the hill. There you go. So no passing because Johnny Larson is still stranded in the gravel here. 20 seconds to full course yellow. Now they're back in the green flag zone. She's got to try and make the pass before they get the countdown to zero. We are going full course yellow in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four, three, two, one. Full course yellow, full course yellow. Brilliant stuff by Sarah Bovey. Made the pass out of Aqua Minerali and she beat the countdown. I got it before the full course yellow. <laughs> Three, two, one, and the full course yellow. Thank you. Yellow, black, and red. That's Manuel Maldonado in second place for Panis Racing. Right behind him, Johnny Edgar, the AO by TF Car, has not given this up. Huge lock up. Big mistake by Manuel Maldonado. Nearly gave away second. Oh, and there's trouble. Carl Watson, our Bennett for Cool Racing, and that's RLR M Sports' James Dason. Dayson gets going, but the cool racing car is still stuck in the gravel at Villeneuve. He's going to need a tow. We will go full course yellow. And there is the Manitou rescuing the cool racing car. Carl Watson, our Bennett race here in hypercar for Isotta Fraschini in the very wet world endurance race about two months ago in Imola. Back to green flag racing, great jump from Johnny Edgar, the AO by TF Sportman gets the jump on Manuel Maldonado to grab second place. Here on the run up to Tosa, Manuel Maldonado looks to the inside. There was a little bump there. Edgar hangs on, still in second place. Well, that was great work by the AO by TF Sport team and driver. They just managed to outfumble Panis Racing and it is AO by TF who are now in second place. Riding with Torsten Kratz, this car was the leader early on, don't forget, chasing Miguel Cristoval for cool racing in LMP3. This is the battle for fifth place. And as this LMP2 battle goes by them, it might offer a chance for Torsten Kratz to get by the cool racing car if they hold him up here and they have a little. Often it is quicker cars, more than slower cars, that give you the opportunity. There's the Algar Pro car coming through as well. That did not help Torsten Kratz, but might do here. Does Miguel Cristobal really held offline, really delayed. And through goes the race leader, bouncing across the grass there, Luca Giotto. That was another heart in the mouth moment. And Torsten Kratz gets by, makes the pass into the Variante Alta, but that was very close for all concerned. LMP2 Pro-Am lead battle continues in the pit lane. 77 on the left of your screen, George Eroda handing over to René Binder. And Francois Perodo handing over to Alessio Rivera on the right in the AF Corsa car. Leader is in, 65. Artur Leclerc taking over from Manuel Maldonado in trouble for Lorenzo Flusa. Was in third for cool racing, oh my goodness me. Yeah, no, everything's going well. I think I was really happy with the start that I made, uh, and then I managed to create a gap with the cars behind. And then our first pit stop came, it was clean. I'm happy with uh, the job that the team's been doing this whole weekend. It's been faultless. And then, yes, uh, on the second stint there, I lost a little bit. But also, I think the, the fight with Yoto wasn't really that fair. I mean, when you push someone off the track and uh, they don't get anything, or at least he doesn't get review, then it feels like we've been hard done. But anyway, we'll see if they look at it or not. But we're still doing a great job and my teammates have been really quick this whole weekend. So, yeah, fingers crossed we can uh, bring the car home in a good place. And, uh, yeah, let's see where, he, where the race finish. LMG3 leaders in the pits, that's Sarah Bovi. She's strapping in Rahel Fry, her Swiss teammate. Axel Jeffries taking over from Hiroshi Hamaguchi in the Iron Links Lamborghini. With the Edex Sport number 28 car, now it's Rashad De Geras who's taken over. He's attacking Algarve Pro's Oli Caldwell. This is currently the battle for fourth place as we cycle through the stops. De Geras piling on the pressure, trying to force Caldwell to make a mistake in traffic. Replay at Tosa. Oh, and a swerve from the number four DKR car puts Oli Caldwell into the gravel. Well, that was definitely not Caldwell's fault. The number four car just didn't see him at all. Matteo Crisoni hits his marks. In comes the race leader in LMGT3 and the Proton Porsche. And that means that Rahul Fry now cycles back to the top in LMGT3 in the Iron Dames car. Don't forget, Ferrari have won both races so far this season. 
Here's Lamborghini versus Ferrari for third place. Lamborghini from just up the road, Ferrari a little further away in Maranello. Kessel racing car of Esteban Masson all over the back of Axel Jeffries. A 19 year old French Canadian from Montreal in Quebec in the car guy Kessel Racing Ferrari. Really looking good here through Aqua Minerale. Should have a good run up to the Varianti Alto. He's going to have to go the long way round. Axel Jeffries guards the inside line and there's a little bit of rubbing racing. The Raging Bull and the Prancing Horse. Zimbabwe's Axel Jeffries in the green Lamborghini, the man who currently holds the GT3 record around the Nordschleife of the Nürburgring, but he's still under pressure from young Esteban Masson. Masson this time with a run on the inside up the hill towards the Piratella. Becomes the outside there, but still he manages to hold his line. And Axel Jeffries took a lot of curb to avoid the contact, kept it clean, but he did lose third place. Battle for the lead. This is Robert Kubitzer now in the AO by TF Sport Machine, right behind Artur Leclerc, younger brother of Charles, the Formula One Ferrari racer. The Monegasque racing here for Panis. And Kubitzer could so easily have been the Le Mans winner this year. The yellow Ferrari had lots of speed, but just didn't have the luck. Oh, cool racing in the barriers and hard in the barriers as well. And that is Paul Luc Chatan. What's happened here? Was there contact? Looks like it. That's on the run down to Tamburello and a hard, hard stop. And the other car is the number four DKR engineering machine. Panis in the pits as we get ready for virtual safety car. And that's very good news. Paul Luc Chatan out of the car and walking away, so he is okay. Virtual safety car is out, and the real safety car will follow. Picks up our leader in LMGT3, the Iron Dames Porsche of Rahal Freit. There is the race leader, Robert Kubitzer. And it is Edex Sport in the queue. Three cars back who are second placed. We go back to green. No overtaking before the line. No overtaking before the line. Well, luckily for the Edex Sport driver, Rashad Dejeris, we ride on board with him. Cars in front of him are LMP2 machines, or at least one of them is, so it was going quickly. That's the other cool racing car. And there's Panis. P2, P3 cars weaving their way through. Into Europol, the long-time leaders in third, Panis in fourth, and back to the LMGT3 battle for eighth place. That's Matt Griffin with the green highlights, makes contact with Manu Collard. Spins it round. He had to take to the curbs on the inside to try and really avoid center punching the AF Corsa car. Three-way battle for sixth place, the orange-nosed Proton Porsche, then the lapped Formula Racing Ferrari ahead of the pink grid motorsport Aston and the AF Corsa Ferrari. Into your pole in third place, Artur Leclerc in fourth for Panis Racing, chasing Ollie Gray. The black and blue Algarve Pro car is not part of this battle, it's a lap down. So it is a two-car chase for third position, Artur Leclerc on the hunt. And in the garage, his oldest brother, Lorenzo Leclerc, watching on. Manu Collard attacking Mike Wainwright in the GR Racing Ferrari. Collard in the white and black of AF Corsa. Now he's got a good run out of Tosa. Can he make it by up the hill? The Aston Martin's getting away from them. Ooh, he's going to have to creep round. Up the inside, good move. He knows this track inside out, Manu Kalab. Rahul Frey from Kasper Stevenson and Esteban Masson. That is the one, two, three in LMGT3 with 81 minutes remaining. There's about a second and a half covering the top three. Rashad Tejeris, second place now. 
and 34. Drive-through penalty for passing on the yellow. That's Oliver Gray for Inter Europol. That is really going to cost them. After the safety car, all the LMP2 gaps are so close together. Replay here at the Ravazza, and that's Claudio Schiavone looping the Porsche around, and the Iron Dames Porsche with a 10 second penalty added to their next pit stop. Full course yellow in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Full course yellow, full course yellow. We are having marshals going on the edge of the track at the apex of T14. Three, two, one, full course yellow removed, thank you. Back to green, this is the battle for fourth in LMGT3 in the green Lamborghini, Axel Jeffries behind him. In that pink Aston Martin, Lorcan Hannafin. Now he's in for the end of the race. And he's got a great run, but it was a good response to going green from the Lamborghini for the pride of Santa Garta Bolognese. Axel Jeffries looking to try and get a podium and escape the Aston Martin. Jan van Eyten getting ready at Edex Sport. He will take over from Rashad de Geras as they hit the pit lane. Edek in second, Panis coming in from third place. AO by TF, Robert Kubica already surrendering his seat in the race leading number 14 car. So these will be the drivers who will take it to the flag. They will need another stop. Can't go an hour and three minutes unless there is a long safety car. Louis Delatraz out of the pit lane in the AO by TF car. And here's the 34 inch Europol car, Clement Novelak. Oh, a big mistake there. And across the gravel at Acre Minerale, looks like he'll escape, he does. Back to the race lead is the AO by TF car, Louis Delatraz at the wheel. Vector Sport in second, into Europol's 43 in third. Julian Andlau for Proton Competition, the star of the WEC race in Spa, attacking David Perel. Spirit of Race Ferrari were the winners last time out in the LMS in Le Castellet, which seems like a lifetime ago. So Julian Andlau battling for ninth place here. LMGT3 leaders are in the pink Porsche from the Iron Dames. And Michelle Gatting takes over from Rahel Frey for the end of the race. Casper Stevenson handing over to Valentin Asaclo. And this is going to be the battle potentially for victory. Porsche versus Aston Martin. Iron Dames versus Racing Spirit of Lemon. Doesn't look like the Ferraris are in the hunt unless something odd happens. But at least Michelle Gatti has left the pit lane this time, unlike in Barcelona. Valentin Asiclo gives chase. Grid Motorsport making their final stop now. This is Lorcan Hannafin. And the stunningly livery of Aston Martin will be behind the magenta Porsche of Michelle Gatting. But where will he be compared to Valentin Asiclo in the other Aston Martin? There go the Iron Dames, out comes Lorcan Hannafin. There is Valentin Asiclo, this is going to be close. Asiclo's got the speed though, he does go through second place, but third place is the grid motorsport machine ahead of the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. Racing Spirit of Lemon Team Radio telling Valentin Asiclo they think that the Iron Dames may not have changed tyres. Only 2.8 behind, just focus, this could be ours. Battle for second in LMP2 Pro-Am here. This is Alex Quinn for Algarve Pro, and right behind Mathieu Vaxivier for AF Corsa. Another driver who plies his trade in hypercars in the World Endurance Championship. Alex Quinn made the better of the traffic there. It fell nicely for him. They got United and into Europol on their tail as well. Look at this. United and into Europol still in the overall rankings, but they're not in the Pro-Am battle, and that's the key here for Mathieu of Axivier. Francois Perodo and his AF Corsa team winning Pro-Am in LMP2 at Le Mans. 
Andrea Caldarelli in the Iron Lynx Lamborghini under pressure from the Kessel Racing Ferrari. This time that's been driven by Daniel Serra, the Brazilian. And Serra all over the back of Caldarelli. Caldarelli, a long time Lamborghini GT ace, long time GT ace and sports car racer. And hanging on here to fourth place for the pride of Santa Gata Bolognese. And meanwhile, Daniel Serra trying to overhaul him and see if he can get a podium for Maranello. Oh, someone is off in a cloud of gravel dust, and this is Bent Viscal, the leader in LMP2 Pro Am for Proton Competition. And in traffic, oh, contact from JB Simenauer in the Duquesne car, and that put him into the gravel trap. Battle for the lead in LMGT3, half an hour to go. And it's Rahal Fry by inches from Valentin Asaclo and another full course yellow. Asaclo only just avoiding contact with the Inter Europol car there and the back of Rahal Frey's Porsche, but this has been a big battle all weekend. Yeah, that started in qualifying yesterday where we were fighting for just a tenth of a second and that continued through the race today. Uh, the, the seas parted at the start and I thought I had it made, but she found her way too and she made it very interesting and uh, it was a really great race and it continues to be with them. That pink Porsche is pretty tough. Whoever comes out on top of this will have earned it. Great pace. I'm confident. Be smart with the overtaking. We'll make it. You're the fastest on track. Ice forward. Only the win matters now, says his engineer. Three, two, one. Full course yellow removed. And again we go, and these restarts are so crucial. You can gain and lose lots of time, but you can also gain or lose places. Michelle Gatting responded superbly there. Again, the Iron Dames, the pit crew counting them down. They don't hear the race director in the car. The team have to relay that. Everything crossed in both garages. Iron Dames versus Racing Spirit of Le Mans. This is for the first non-Ferrari win of the season in LMGT3. 22 minutes to go. Valentin Asaclo is pushing, actually literally pushing Michel Gatti there. He saw the back of the Porsche twitching wickedly. He can't get through. Brilliant stuff from Michel Gatti. Brilliant stuff from Valentin Asaclo. Contact in the Ferrari Lamborghini battle at Tosa. Oh, Andrea Caldarelli just showing Daniel Serra the grass. Race leader in the pits, Panis in for their final stop. Charles Milesi stays in. And finally the car fires, but that was seconds lost. And here comes Lou Delatraz, AO by TF. How close is this going to be? The Panis Racing car, is he going to make it out in front? It does. They retain the lead. AO by TF in second place. 18 minutes to win it for Louis Delatraz. Someone in trouble. That's Iron Lynx Proton. That's the number nine car, Maceo Capietto. And another full course yellow. Bravo, Michi, bravo. 16 minutes to go. Bravo, great job. Do your best. Three, two, one, full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. Look at Lorcan Hannafin trying to find a way around for second place around the outside of Valentin Asaclo. The pink Aston does not make it through. Michel Gatting leads, Valentin Asaclo with the yellow nose in second, Lorcan Hannafin pink and blue in third. That's one, two, three, right there in LMGT3. Just over 11 minutes to go. The entire podium is covered by one second after that last restart. Inside the final four minutes now in the battle for second in LMP3. Here comes Gillian Orion for Team Virage. He's got a great run down to Tamborello. He's got the inside line and he goes by Mathieu LaHaye. Takes second in LMP3. <laughs> Three-way battle for third. Felipe Drugovic ahead of Tom Dillman and Jop van Oetert. And they bounce the Inter Europol LMP3 car off into the gravel. Here comes Dillman for Inter Europol. Yellow and green. He's attacking Felipe Drugovic. 
for the Brazilian for Vector Sport hanging on to this podium. Last lap here, O'Neill Last lap in LMGG3 as well. Michelle Gatin just ahead of Valentina Ciclo. And right behind them is Daniel Serra. He's up to third now in the Kessel Racing Ferrari. There he is. He's coming fast. Last lap. It's too late, surely, for the Ferrari. And it is too late for everybody else. Panis Racing wins in Imola. As Charmelesi brings it across the line. Down into Aqua Minerali comes the one, two, three in LMGT3. Michelle Gatting hanging on from Valentin Asaklo, who's under real pressure from Daniel Serra. Serra could take second place. Asaklo sees the danger, defending hard here up to the Variante Alta. And now suddenly he's over the curbs. He could lose second place here. Michelle Gatting goes away. Daniel Serra round the outside for the Ferrari. Can't make it through. Asaklo with damage on the rear. All's fair in the final lap, but it will be the first win of the season for the Iron Dames after such heartbreak this year. They claim victory. Michelle Gatting takes it at the line. What a finish in Imola. Delight on the face of team boss Olivier Panis. Panis Racing's first win of the season as they take the overall victory. Algarve Pro ninth overall, winning in LMP2 Pro-Am. Victory in LMP3 going to Euro International's number 11 crew and the Iron Dames winning in LMGT3. That was quite a race. Into Park Ferme, Charles Malesi and his teammates for Paris Racing. Yeah, the, the car was amazing. Uh, the team gave us uh, an incredible car since the test. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the race pace was, was great at the end. Uh, also, the strategy at the end was good. We, we got a bit screwed at some point with the safety car. But, uh, yeah, that's part of the race. And, uh, yeah, we managed to, to take it back. So, that's nice for the team and for me. Sadly, Charles was judged to have sped up too soon after one of the full course yellows and a post-race penalty dropped them to fifth, promoting AO by TF to the race win. Which means now at the midway point of the season, they are just two points off the championship lead. Victory in LMP2 Pro-Am went to the car that qualified seventh of eight. Crichton Lentudis, Richard Bradley and Alex Quinn coming out on top of the pile. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, we've we've actually been really quick all weekend. Um, we were a little bit back on the starting grid, but Richard done it all. Well, Crichton started off really a, a great race and then Richard carried on. And then it was all about strategy with the other cars fighting for a podium. And uh, we, had, we had the best strategy and, uh, and the pace to win. So really, really happy. A first win for the Algarve Pro Trio. AF Corsa taking second, Richard Mill by TDS third. And they are in reverse order of the top three in the points. Just three apart at the top, and Algarve Pro still very much in contention. Victory in LMP3 going to Euro Internationals duo Adam Alley and Matthew Bell. Um, it was a tough race. I'm glad it wasn't as hot as it's been earlier in the week because you don't get a rest round here. Um, but an unreal place to win. Awesome for the championship. And um, yeah, we're on the board now for a win. On the board and on the top step of the podium and probably feeling pretty tired. Virage taking second place, ultimate in third. And that win vaults Euro International's number 11 crew into a two-point lead at the top of the points table midway through the season. The closest margin of victory was for the Iron Dames. Sara Bovi, Rahel Fry and Michelle Gatting finally getting the win. And it might taste all that much sweeter because of how hard it's been. Yeah, there's something with us and Aston Martin from last year as well. To be honest, uh, yeah, it was. Um, I, I really wanted that win for all of us, and it was a bit like in Bahrain last year. It was all or nothing. 
He made it difficult for me, I have to say, but um, also in poor regard. I was the one stuck behind him, so now it was his turn and it was it was a nice fight. Maybe a bit on yet sometimes, but um, no, we did it today. Honestly, it was unexpected, uh, so I'm just so happy for those yeah. two and the rest of the team. Really, it's for all of them. The Iron Dames are joined on the podium by Racing Spirit of Lemon and Kessel Racing, but a post-race penalty for the 57 Kessel Ferrari for passing under double-waved yellows handed third to the Iron Lynx Lamborghini. And while the Lambo crew may have missed their moment on the podium, those vital points do mean that they are still leading the championship from Racing Spirit of Le Mans, who are one ahead of the Iron Dames. So is the second half of the season going to be tight, close, exciting? You betcha. Imola had it all, but with three more races remaining, there is still plenty to play for. That is it for the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari. Next time we'll be at the awesome Spa Francorchamps on the 25th of August, and we will see you there. Let it be so big again.